For DeFi applications or bots, you might need a functionality where you can swap tokens programmatically. So that's what we will see in this video. In this video, we will learn how we can swap tokens programmatically on Solana's decentralized exchange Radium. So without any ado, let's jump into it. This is how our file structure looks like. We will need these files to execute the swap and to get all the information together. So before understanding all of these files and going deep into them, let's first understand the flow. So we will have a config.ts file in which we will have the swap configuration. We will have the priority free configuration. We will also have the environment variables like our quick node RPC and wallet's private key loaded into the config.ts file from which other files like main.ts and radium.ts can use them. So after the config.ts file, we will have radium swap.ts file, which will construct the swap transaction by first getting the pool information from the mainnet.json file. Mainnet.json file is basically the directory of all the pools of radium decks. And that file can be found on this link. This link will be linked in the description below. So radiumswap.ts loads the pool info, sorts out that information and finds the relevant pool information and then creates a swap transaction. Then main.ts file is the actual file which is used to send the transaction. So main.ts file also imports radiumswap.ts and uses it. Then main.ts file also imports config.ts file to get the swap configuration and to get the wallet and RPC URL. So this is how the flow or the interrelation of file looks like. And now let's get back to our code. So this is our mainnet.json file. As you can see, it has all the information around different pools of radium decks. This file particularly is very large right now at the time of creation of this video. It's at around 500 megabytes or MB. So let's first look at the environment variable file. In that we have our quick node URL which will hold the quick node Solana mainnet RPC URL. Then we have the wallet secret key which will hold our wallet's private key. So Make sure that whenever you are storing your sensitive information or sensitive API keys in an environment variable file, you do not upload that environment variable file to any public repository like GitHub. So always be cautious whenever you are uploading or sharing your code with others. So the first file which we will take a look at is config.js file. In config.js file, we are importing the .env library and HTTPS library. We are importing the .env library because we will be importing the environment variables using that library. And then we have the HTTPS library because we will be making a custom call, QN estimate priority fees call to the quick node RPC to get the accurate priority fee for the radium amm program and then we are loading the dot and configurations and we have some checks for with node rpc url and wallet secret key if they exist in the environment variable or not if they do not throw an error then we are creating an interface for priority free response and this is the function https request which will be used to handle the response from the priority fee api which is this and fetch priority fee is our main function to fetch the priority fee where again we are first checking if the footnote url exists or not and we are inputting it into url and then for options we are sending method as post headers as application json and in the request body we are sending the request with the methods name and parameters so qn estimate priority fees take two parameters latest n block or last n blocks and account so the last n blocks is basically the number of blocks which you want to average to get the average priority fee for a particular account address so now you might think that solana already have a native prioritization fee method then why are we using this custom quick note method so we are using this custom quick note method to get the accurate priority fee for that particular program 
by averaging the priority fee for that particular program throughout latest blocks or throughout a range of latest blocks and that's what we are doing over here we are taking a range of past 100 blocks for this particular program which is the JDM AMM or automated market maker program and we are getting the average priority fee for past 100 blocks for that particular program so that we can get more accurate priority fee and uh, with quick note priority fee API you get extreme high medium and low percentiles of priority fee and depending on your priority of how fast you want your transaction to get ahead in the queue you can use any of these configuration we will be using extreme and now let's go back to our code so we will get the response and then save it in data and from data we will get the extreme priority fee per compute unit and then we will have a constant of compute unit over here we have 300,000 as the compute units but you can change it based on your typical transaction and we will also simulate the transaction which will give us the compute units used or which will give us the compute units which can be used in the transaction so depending on your simulation or depending on your estimation or research we can set this to anything then we'll convert the priority fee in micro inputs and finally we will convert the priority key in solve then we have a function called is priority free response to check if everything is correct and if the response is what we expected and then we are exporting the config in config we are exporting the rpc url we are exporting the wallet secret key which will be our wallet we are exporting the basement which is the solana or wrapped sol address and then quote mint which will be the next token which we want our sol token to be swapped with which over here is the bonk token so we will need mint addresses for both the tokens and then we have the token a amount which is basically the base token this is just for the demo purposes so i have kept the base token amount to be very low and then we have another config called execute swap which right now is false so whenever it is false it will simulate the transaction if you want to actually send the transaction this will have to be changed to true and then another config is use version transaction where if it's set false it will send the legacy transaction and if it's set true our script will send the version transaction if you want to learn more about version or legacy transactions check out the link in the i button above and the next configuration is slippage which is set to 5%. Basically, whenever you are swapping tokens, the price of a token might change from the swap start to swap execution. So slippage is basically the allowance which you are okay with or the price change you are okay with. So over here, we are setting it at 5%, which means that we are okay with the 5% price changes. And then in the get priority fee config, we are fetching the priority fee so this was our config file or config.ts file and in radium swap.ts we have our actual configuration of loading the pool information finding the relevant pool information for these tokens where we have our base token as solana or flapped sol and the code token as bonk so we will find the pool information for those particular tokens and then create a swap transaction handle legacy and version transactions also have the logic for simulation of those two types of transactions so let's see how we are doing that so first we are importing a bunch of stuff from solana web 3 js and then also importing a bunch of stuff from radium sdk so we will be using the radium sdk because we are creating a script or you can even say a app on top of radium and then we are importing the wallet from anchor to handle our wallet key pairs and base 58 library to encode and decode from base 58 and file system so that we can import stuff from mainnet.json file and then we are importing a bunch of stuff from solana spl token library so that we can work with token standards and finally we are importing the config from config file and over here we have created a union type of in and out which will basically handle the swap in and out swap in means that we are swapping the base token with the code token swap out means that we are swapping the code token with the base token then we have our main class called radium swap class which will be exported and obviously be used in the main.ts file 
So in the radium swap class, we first have a constructor where first we are initializing the RPC URL and then the wallet. And we are also logging some errors. We also have the radium v4 program ID, which is basically the radium AMM program ID. And then we have load pool keys function where we are loading the pool information from mainnet.json file if it exists and if it does not we are throwing an error and then we have a function called find pool information for tokens where we are finding the pool information for our base mint token and quote mint token particularly where the base mint token will be the wrapped salt token and the quote mint token will be the bonk token and then we have a function called get program accounts which will be using the radium amm pool program to find the accounts for this particular configuration where we have the basement token as wrapped sol and quote mint token as bonk and then we have a function called find radium pool info which will be used if the pool info cannot be found by find pool info for tokens function so this function basically looks and filters data on chain to get data for those particular tokens we don't need to take a look at this right now because we will definitely have our pool in mainnet.json file but if a token is very new and you did not update your mainnet.json file what you can do is you can use this function to get the data from chain and then we have another function called get owner token accounts which will get the tokens for the particular owner in this case our wallet address then we have another function called get swap site which takes three parameters pool keys one from one to and pool keys is basically information of liquidity pool one from is the mint address of the token we are swapping from one to is the mint address of uh, the token we are swapping to and what we are saying over here is that if the want from token is equal to base mint which is wrapped stall and want to token is equal to quote mint which is our bonk token then the swap side is in or else vice versa the swap side is out and if no relevant pool is found or no matching pool is found send an error then we have our core function called get swap transaction which is responsible for actually swapping the transactions where first we are getting the pool info from token swap side base token code token currency in currency out and amount in and slip ips percentage then we also get the priority fee from the config file user token account from get owner token accounts function then the actual swap transaction function and the configurations of the transaction where we have amount in amount out again user keys pool keys transaction version connection which is rpc url compute unit budget config etc this function handles both version and legacy transaction and then we have two functions for sending legacy transaction and sending version transactions and then we have simulation functions for both legacy and version transaction and then we have get token account by owner and mint which will create a structure for a token account and will be used if a token account is not found on a wallet address then we have another function called create wrapped sol account instruction which will create an instruction to wrap the native sol into a wrapped sol which is a spl token which is required whenever you are swapping tokens and then we are returning transaction and wrapped sol account so this is how our radium swap.ts file looks like and again all of these files will be linked in the description below so what you just have to do is git clone the repository and do npm install and now let's come to our main.ts file so over here we are importing the radium swap file config file and some modules from solana web 3 js library then we have the get token balance function which will get the specific tokens for a user in this case us using the radium swap instance and the core function the swap function where first we are logging some message and then creating a new or initializing a new radium swap instance and loading the pool keys the pool keys are not found logging another error message and then we are creating the wrap sol instruction over here then fetching the priority fee from the config file and then finally creating the transaction using the get swap transaction function from radium swap.ts file and passing these values from config file and then noting down some information now comes the actual transaction execution part so if execute swap in config which is over here execute swap if 
that is set true then it will send the transaction and it will also check if the use version transaction is set true it will go through this process and if not it will go to this process which means that it will basically send the legacy transaction as you can see over here and if it's set to true it will send the version transaction and then log some information like the transaction signature and uh, link to the Solana Explorer with the transaction signature and the message that transaction confirmed successfully then get the sol balance and pong balance and log them as well but if execute swap is set false we will simulate the transaction by logging the message simulating transaction dry run then again check if you want to use the version transaction or legacy transaction by looking at the boolean value over here and then logging down some logs and finally we are executing the function and catching error so right now as you can see the execute swap boolean value is set false now let's run the script so we can see that how the simulation looks like as you can see this is our public key or wallet address it will fetch the priority fee now so the priority fee for radium amm program should be this and uh, this is just the simulation so as you can see our simulation has passed and uh, the simulation was successful and these are the logs you can see each and every instruction being simulated over here and you can also see the number of compute units used for each instruction and the total number of compute unit used now let's actually send the transaction so to send the transaction we will have to turn this boolean value to true go back to our terminal run the script again so as you can see it's starting the same process but at this point it will actually send the transaction not just simulate it so as you can see it's right now creating the swap transaction and this is our transaction signature and once the transaction is completed we will get the link to solana explorer and updated balances for our wallet address so as you can see the transaction was executed and this is the link to Solana Explorer. So let's just copy this, go back to our browser, look at the transaction. So as you can see, the transaction was already finalized and it was of type legacy. And we can also see all the account inputs, token balances, instructions which were executed. And then we can see that we bought around 7.6 bonk so this is how you can programmatically swap on radium decentralized exchange using typescript the entire code will be linked in the description below and make sure to use the priority fee add-on from quicknote to land your transactions faster or to increase the probability of your transactions to get confirmed faster the add-on is available for free so just go to the add-on section of your solana endpoint and install that add-on make sure to like the video subscribe to the quick note youtube channel and i'll see you in the next one bye bye